Commanders, excellent work. Your progress on day two has achieved a beachhead for the Alliance. I know losses were higher than expected, but lives lost will not be in vain. Because of your soldiers' hard work, you've been able to kick the Stratic right in the pants. But now we have to keep going, or risk losing everything. Task Force Maniac has dissolved. You've either killed all their troops and destroyed their equipment, or captured their survivors. With the death of their commander, Lieutenant Colonel Mikhail Strauss, we've dealt a serious blow to the enemy. Unfortunately, surprise to no one, the Stratic rallied and are mounting a second attack. Their new task force, Demos, is led by Lieutenant Colonel Jasmine Volga. The dossier on here is pretty light. What we do know is that she's been newly promoted and that she's eager to prove herself to Stratic Command. She's also a seasoned armor officer. Here's your battlefield orientation as we roll into day three of Operation Chrome Hammer. Algaria, you can see his purple star there, which will be roughly where his base is going to be. And then to the north, near the capital of Taraya, you've got Task Force Mongoose with... There, that one's currently out of play. To the north, on the other side of the Rio Tijuana border, you've got the Air Strategic Air Base, and then you've got two red triangles there, which represent the new battle groups that are currently moving into theater uh, by the Stratic on the west and then the east side of the river. Into the tactical map, guys, you can see that we've added graphics like forests, swamps, hills, and cities. And at the bottom of the map, there's a legend that tells you what the restrictions and benefits are for each of those. Zooming into Steven's area of operations, you can see just to the north where the two Stratic battle groups are pushing south of the border, attempting to retake the capital. This first tactical battle group is consisting of one platoon of light tanks. Uh, these are rapid light armored vehicles that are equipped with a 90 millimeter cannon. Uh, they have a heavy ADA system in support, as well as two cannon ADA. But this rapid infantry platoon are infantry that are mounted on motorcycles and ATVs. They are incredibly fast and light to assault. Fire support, they have one section of 200 millimeter tube artillery. Uh, this is capable of reaching a range of five with an AT of three. Pay close attention to this heavy ADS. It is upgraded with an advanced protection system which gives it a plus one hit on against any missiles. That includes any aircraft that are trying to strike it or long range armor delivery. Zooming out and moving to the east, you'll notice there's a platoon of Blitz infantry with two armored trucks here. Now, the Alliance hasn't encountered the Blitz infantry before. These are pseudo elite heavy infantry that like to get in and get to the assaults. All these units have been upgraded. You'll see that the armored trucks are equipped with a decoy element, which allows them to basically negate one successful hit against them. One of the Blitz infantry platoons is upgraded with a medic, allowing them to roll to get their wounded back into action the same day. And the second one has been equipped with chaff, which allows them a defensive countermeasure. Moving from the Blitz infantry to lie near the Stratic Air Base. This is a relatively heavy battle group. It's armed with three main battle tanks, each upgraded with active protective measures. This is a new piece of technology that the Alliance hasn't had to fight yet. It's the Stratic Truck Art Missile Artillery System. It has a fast move and can deploy rockets much like the Alliance's artillery. The rest of this battle group consists of a heavy ADA and two APCs. These APCs have been upgraded with Stealth, which allows them a plus one hit on against any long range attacks. They also have four sections of regular infantry. It's not all doom and gloom for the Alliance. For this mission, you'll have landmines. Now at the end of day three, once you've set all your forces, you can place the landmines no greater than two spaces away from one of your units. The way landmines work are when an enemy attempts to breach through the obstacle belt, they have to roll a skill check. If they fail the skill check, they're not able to pass, and then they have to roll lethality to see if they're either wounded and damaged 
or killed or destroyed. Another unique rule set you'll have for this mission is an ambush force. So what you do at the end of day three is you select one unit and bring it out to the side. That unit can be later in place in order to conduct an ambush. At the start of your turn or during an enemy's turn, you can place your ambush force onto the map. There's a couple qualifiers here. One, it has to be at least two spaces away from whatever unit you're attempting to ambush. And two, there needs to be something blocking the line of sight of the enemy. So here you can see that qualifies as a correct position. There's some, there's trees blocking the line of sight to the target it wants to ambush. This position, however, does not qualify. Even though there's an obstacle blocking the line of sight, it's only one grid away. Not this, this is also wrong. Here you have two pieces of terrain that do block line of sight and they are diagonal to each other. So therefore the point between at the diagonal does count as blocked line of sight. This doesn't work because even though the tanks have blocked line of sight, the ABC does not. All right team, this is a very simple mission. You need to defend and do not allow the Stratic forces to take the capital of Taraya. Most likely enemy course of action is they will take Battle Group 1 and drive directly south on the western side of the river to try and fix Task Force Mongoose. Meanwhile, on the eastern side of the river, Battle Group 2 will continue to press south and try and seize Taraya from the western side. The most dangerous course of action is that Battle Group 1 drives south, fixes Task Force Mongoose, while Battle Group 2 drives south and then crosses at the northern bridge and attacks to destroy Task Force Monk. Your first secondary objective is to try to seize the northern bridge on the river. This will isolate the two forces from each other and prevent them from combining. The next secondary objective is to prevent any destruction to the historic district in Taraya. Your last secondary objective, the air base north of Rio Tuano's border, is where the Stratic are massing their air power. Two sorties or three missile strikes in the space will damage the aircraft there and deny air power for the Stratic for two days. That concludes your mission brief for day three and four. You'll have 24 hours to set your defenses. After that, the Stratic will be coming for you. Lieutenant Colonel Volga cannot be underestimated. Though junior, she's highly aggressive and very skilled. Anticipate her using artillery to shape the forward positions and then rushing with infantry. She knows how to use her tanks and will employ them properly. Best of luck. Gentlemen, you must hold this position.